Every season of Survivor is a story, but sometimes that story can be told over the course of multiple seasons. Some players will have two-part stories, while others can play four or even five times and have a much longer tale. Why do some players rise and fall and never recover, while others can fall and still get back up and succeed? Well, today we're going to witness the rise and fall of Big Tom, who first played on Survivor's third season, Survivor Africa. 39 days, 16 people, one Survivor. Tom Buchanan, a 45-year-old goat farmer, was a castaway on Survivor's third season, Survivor Africa. And wow, we need to establish a few things about this season that shape a lot of the story being told here. Number one is that this was filmed in the summer before 9-11 happened, but aired after it happened. I just wanted to set the stage for the time this is happening because where we are today and where people were back then are in a lot of ways the same, but in many ways different. And this video is focusing on the story being told at that time. So season three of Survivor is taking place in Kenya with 16 players divided into two tribes, Samburu and Baran. Tom is on the Baran tribe where he is introduced to us as a goat farmer from Virginia and right as the players are dropped off they need to grab their supplies and go on a grueling hike to their camp. While this is very similar to the Australian Outback in terms of how it's starting, the environment is wildly different. This place is hot with little shade and animals are just openly roaming around. Because this is such a harsh place to live, the show actually gives them some clean water to get started with and uh, yeah, Tom's tribe decides this is too heavy. Let's dump it. We'll just get water when we get there. What a mistake. On top of that, Diane is navigating for them and she straight up sucks at it. I live on a farm and the first sheep jumps in a hole, the rest of them fall. And here we were following this blonde girl zigzagging through the desert saying, I think we're this way. But they do eventually reach their camp, and what do you know? People are feeling dehydrated. Well, if only we had water. Well, 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 a well would be nice, but the watering hole they were banking on, it's not great. In fact, elephants use it to wash themselves, so it really isn't clean. Big Tom, though, is a hard worker, and he knows how to get this watering hole cleaned up. You can lie, I can You can lie, I can We'll go fishing in a honey, baby mine. I know exactly what I'm doing here. Is this man going to be a good strategist? I mean, probably not, but I feel like this classic era of the show thrives on big characters and Tom seems to be all character. We then see Jesse struggling hard along with Diane, and so the tribe cracks open a can of cherries where they take one and pass it down. Ethan says he wants his equal share of cherries, but he saw Clarence take two and that annoys him to no end. On top of that, this tribe loses immunity and Diane is in physically bad shape, so Clarence volunteers to watch her while everyone goes to the watering hole and while they're there they realize oh crap what if Clarence eats into their food supply while they're gone as it turns out their fears were not unfounded so when we got on that tree I sniffed a little bit more through talking to Diane she admits that she give Clarence some water and they just ate a can of beans hey Clarence Diane talk like you want to eat some while it's gone if you have you need to kind of fess up explain why you thought you should eat a can of food I got her something to eat her. So we split it while she was gone, just so she could feel better. It ain't no big deal. It's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to me too. And I, I want to make it straight right. Anybody that eats without the rest of it, it's a big deal. It was a judgment call I made. It was bad damn judgment. There's eight of us. You guys were gone. It don't matter, we're all making it. You can't make the decision. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy I had to open it for her. You don't have to open it to her. Well, then it should, right. She should have eaten You a doctor, let me see your license. You ain't thing. no doctor. But did you eat any? Yes. Okay, well that's that's You made the call here. for you, bro. You made the call for you too. Did that in the army. You made a bad call in the army, you'd be kicked out of there so Hell, fast. Hell, they'd shoot you. They'd shoot you. You'd be code red I'd your shoot ass, you. dude. Bad Man, there were, there were only, there were only three. Right. I wasn't going to not tell you guys. Here's the can right now. I uh I put it up. I tossed it. Today's a hard day for us. We have got to we have we have we to gotta vote. we have to kick one of us out. Today was not a good day to do this. There is a lot to unpack here. It has been three days struggling to survive with no water, and Clarence did that with the purpose of being sneaky because he hides the can. So being mad is to be expected. I think Lex handles this situation the best while Ethan was at a loss for words, and Tom said exactly how he felt without restraint. Three different approaches to a crappy situation. We then go to tribal council where Tom says, I forgive, but I don't forget, so everyone goes to vote, and... Clarence Black, he let the team down, 
We were looking for somebody who was strong, but yet he is weak. Our tribe would do what it takes to win, but we'll do it with our head eye. First vote. Clarence. Clarence Black. Diane. Two votes Clarence, two votes Diane. Three votes Diane. 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 Diane, the tribe has spoken. And that is it for the premiere episode of Africa. Big Tom so far has been the resident redneck goofball of their tribe, and while he seems to be fun-loving, don't make him mad. However, the Baran tribe did resist the urge to vote Clarence off, so let's see if there's any redemption to be had. By the way, did you know this video was selected and created back in June of 2023 at the request of my patrons on Patreon? If you want to pick what I make and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining them. Links in the description. Episode 2 starts off with Lex explaining that Tom's vote for Clarence was on purpose as a way for the tribe to send him a message, which is why it wasn't a dumb strategic move. Their tribe then loses reward thanks to Kim Johnson slipping, and she says, I am so sorry for blowing it, and Tom says, no worries, I'm just glad you're on our team. But then we see Jesse getting even sicker than before, as now when she tries to drink water, her body is completely rejecting it, and frankly, if she can't turn it around, then they're going to have to vote her off next. Their tribe is in rough shape, and that's when we see a crucial alliance formed. Tom and I talked this morning. He and I talked about our three-way, you know, agreement. You, him, and me. You, you and Tom are like the three most honest guys. That's, that's, that's who, are, who I, we think is honest. I don't know. Right. You never know. Well, Tom and I basically promised on our son's names. I mean, that was enough for him and I. But, I mean, that's what I want to talk to you about. We're comfortable enough with you, if you want to be part of it, to be making a long-term three-way well, there's, no other, there's no other way. I mean, if it's the three of us, then we don't cannibalize each other until it's three. Right. Interesting that we didn't see the Lex Tom conversation, but instead the Lex Ethan talk. Storytelling wise, that has to mean that Ethan must be the crucial piece to these three sticking together. Uh, but we'll see. They then lose immunity, and that has now three losses in a row. Ethan says, I want Clarence gone before any of these girls go. Uh, is Ethan still holding on to a grudge? And Tom says, Clarence is too valuable to our tribe to seriously consider voting him off right now. I would say Ethan is definitely harboring a grudge. But then at tribal council, Tom votes for Clarence yet again to send another message. This feels unnecessary. But Jesse is voted off five to two. Jesse, the tribe has spoken. To go. Back at camp after tribal sees things heating up as there is a lion literally circling their camp while wheezing. So they kind of know exactly where it's at. But that doesn't mean they aren't taking number twos in their pants at the same time. The next morning they walk out and see the paw prints littered all around. They're like, yeah, uh, today we're building up the walls around our camp because all of a sudden the threat is real. And without the show's production there, I bet a lion would have tried to eat them. They then win the reward challenge, which comes with 100 gallons of drinking water, which is huge, by the way, physically and for their morale. But then it's time for immunity and their tribe needs to make the best SOS signal that has ever been seen. So and I'm going to have this feather in my eye and I might. We got a black man with white tighties on. Got a big fat man with a flag waving. Got two little skinny men with flags running around. Women in her thong there. We got a young lady shaking bacon up there. So I don't know what else we could do. If that one stopped the plane, I want to talk to the pilot. Okay, after conferring with our rescue pilot and Harold, our drop master, both have decided that because of the use of color and also the terrain, the rod is the winning tribe. We will now drop the crate. The rod has immunity. I think Kim's acrylic paint single-handedly won it for them, but maybe, just maybe, it was the feather in Tom's butt. Episode 4 sees Tom struggling hard to eat the food that Kim makes, so he tries to climb a tree to get some food, which is so dumb. Look at this tree and look at Tom. Thankfully, he stops. But then they try knocking it down with rocks, which takes forever, and then they have to bust it open. And for what? Like a thumbnail's worth of food. What a waste of time. On their trek to the watering hole, they encounter a bull, and everyone says, yeah, we have learned pretty quickly that we need to adjust to the animals, not them adjusting to us. So they take the long way around. Thankfully, they win immunity, so they're now even in numbers with Sombaru, and in episode five, they get a note that says, hey, go ahead and send three people on a quest. Weird, but okay. Tom, Lex, and Kelly Goldsmith volunteer to go, and when they see Jeff. You guys can give me your buffs. Kelly, Lex, Tom, 
guys are now members of Samburu. When Jeff <laughs> said, give me your buff, I almost turned around and bolted. I would have, if he, you know, and ran. It's a long way back to camp, but if he give me the option, run all the way back to camp, no water for two days, or give me a buff, I'd still be trying to run. Wow, for the first time in Survivor history, we have a game changing twist that no one saw coming. I mean, they didn't pack any of their stuff with them as a tribe swap has never occurred before. This is new. Immediately upon arriving at Samburu, they realized, Oh, this is the lazy camp, and the people who are still here, they're the laziest ones of the lazy camp. Wow. They don't clean up, they sleep in, and all of the hard workers they did have just swap to the other tribe. These Gen Xers are real slackers. As it turns out, the Sombaru watering hole has not been cleared out at all, so Tom has to do that again, but this time without any of the fun singing. Right away, we get an analysis from Tom where he says, I think Lindsay is the weakest of these three, and their minds are working overtime on who might have pass votes amongst this group in case a tie happens, like what we saw in the merge episode of season two, because whoever has the most pass votes goes in a tie. Lex says maybe it's Brandon, but he isn't sure. But in bigger slash more important news, Lindsay has a tick on her butt and she desperately needs help. I got me a tick on my ass. Lindsay had a tick on her butt. And tell you the truth, when a woman had a trouble on her butt, I told her that was just what I was made for. It was one of the nicest jobs I've had to do here so far. Thank you. <laughs> I think it was good for her and good for men like kind of refreshing reward. As I said in the beginning of this video, these were different times. Thankfully, they win immunity. And in episode six, Lex and Tom are like, what the heck? We have done a five hour fire watch when everyone else watches for maybe an hour, hour and a half at most. It seems content to just sleep and not keep an eye out for the wildlife. So so lazy. Since what I'm about to show you is a secret scene, meaning it was cut from the show for a reason, we see Tom talk to Brandon about whether he was gay or not in a time when this was rare for someone to admit. Well, you'll have to tell me a little bit more about your lifestyle, because I got a lot of questions today. About what? Well, uh, are you, uh... About me being gay? Well, are you open? Are you, are you gay? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I will be honest with you. I can't say as I've ever known a gay man. If it did, he was still in the closet. You know what I'm saying? You know, saying? that's probably it right there. You most A lot of people know him. They just don't know him. Big P can't get mad about anything he says because he says it with a smile. And I mean, he's very funny. That's his life. And I guess if that's the way you want to live it, have it. But it sure ain't mine. And what's really mom. funny is probably more gotten more in common with me than you do with them since I grew up on a farm and mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. That the At least we can talk about food and iced tea. <laughs> and we country fried chicken, cornbread, beans. But on to more important strategic questions as they see Silas of the old Sombaru tribe was voted out in the last episode. Wow, that means the old Baron is now up by one. And if they can get rid of one more Sombaru, oh, the merge is gonna be a breeze. They do win reward and back at camp, Tom, Lex, and Kelly talk and realize that Kim Johnson has been secretly signaling to them uh, an L with her hands and they kept thinking, is she trying to tell us to throw the challenge? Like lose the challenge, that's what the L means? And as it turns out, no, she's trying to tell them that Lindsay is the one with the pass votes, which by the way, they are correct. That is absolutely the correct assessment. She does have them. This is big if they need to go to tribal council and in ironic fashion, they do lose immunity and why? Lindsay. Lindsay knows this is game over, so she tries to throw a Hail Mary pass. So what if we vote against Brandon? Then what happens? Sounds like a kind of a merger to me. I'm kind of in a no-win situation. I mean, do I go against my personal morals and values and vote against Brandon? Or do I vote with Brandon and Kim and risk being the next one voted out of here? I don't know what I'm going to do, and I don't think I'll know until I get to tribal council. First vote. Big Tom. Lindsay. Big Tom. Lindsay. Tom. Lindsay. That's three votes Lindsay, three votes Tom. We're gonna vote again. First vote. Big Tom. Lindsay. Tom. And we're deadlocked. In the case of a deadlock, we go to votes cast at previous tribal councils. Tom, how many votes have you had cast against you? None that I know of. Lindsay? A couple. Lindsay, the tribe has spoken. 
Oh my God, I'm so glad Lindsay's gone. Can I just say that again? I am so glad Lindsay is gone. I could not have taken this merge with her whining and crying and bawling and being a baby. Lindsay's gone. And the other two, uh, they're nervous as a whore in church. Brandon is such a faker, but in bigger news, the old Baron is now up six to four, and believe me, those tribal lines are real. Lex says we are guaranteed final four now with Ethan. This will be a cakewalk, which of course means it won't be. And the seeds of that are planted for us as an audience. When Lex makes a spoon that he calls the Uber spoon, it's really like a cringy thing. And Kelly's like, this dude is such a suck up. I don't like him at all. So then everyone sees Jeff and the 10 of you have now merged into one tribe. <laughs> if the last two seasons of the show are any indication of what's about to happen, Baron will pagong the old Sombru tribe until only they remain. They might take a shot at Clarence a bit early, a la Jerry being taken out early last season, but we'll see about that. T-Bird ends up beating Clarence in an immunity challenge that lasts over six hours, and the tribe is given food and drink to celebrate the merge. Emphasis on drink because, uh, Tom gets a little drunk and he says T-Bird is hot. Well then. Tom then talks to Ethan about who to vote off next and it seems like it will be an old Sombru member, obviously. Lex then says, mmm, what about Clarence? Wait, what, why, are we serious right now, Clarence? What has Clarence done to them since day three? And yeah, they have the numbers, but voting Clarence off now, it's a little risky, don't you think? You vote him off and then like Kelly or Kim Johnson flips the air side and that's game. A Clarence vote off here is a bad move through and through, but Lex, thinking he is being so noble, tells Clarence man to man, hey, I'm voting you off. Oh my gosh. Tom says I would rather vote off Brandon. You know, the smart decision around here, which is why I think that secret scene we saw earlier was cut from the show proper, and at Tribal Council, I am slapping my forehead. First vote, Clarence, Lex, Lex, it's two votes Lexed. Clarence. 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 The tribe has spoken. Dum da dum dum. Dum da dum 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 dum. That was so dumb. One person flips and Baron is screwed. I I don't. This is this is all personal. That vote felt like dumb petty revenge, which is why Survivor is so fascinating. But still, episode nine sees a bigger development take place. You see, Lex got two votes. Sure, one was from Clarence, which he expected, but the other one, he doesn't know who voted for him. And as it turns out, we know T-Bird did it. And she doesn't tell a soul, but Lex is on a warpath, raging mad. He's like, oh, you know who did it? Kelly. And now he wants her gone for stabbing him in the back. Clarence would like to say hello to that, I think, though I guess he was stabbed in the front. Is that better? I guess in Lex's mind it is. Lex then talks to Tom and says he overheard Kelly say the words, free agent. And that means she's flipping. Oh my gosh, are we serious right now? Baron is collapsing under their own stupidity fast. I mean, Lex is going absolutely crazy about this. And Tom says, uh, I don't think Kelly did it. And even if she did, who cares? But he doesn't want to go against his alliance with Ethan and Lex, which I get, but this is bad. This is so bad. So we go to tribal council where everyone votes and first vote, Kelly, Lex, Lex, two votes, Lex, Lex, it's four votes, Lex. Kelly. Kelly. Four votes, Kelly. Last vote. Kelly. Kelly. The tribe has spoken. Remember when Baron had a six to four lead? Well, now they're tied four to four. Why? Well, the answer I think is simple, personal and emotional issues. How is Tom the most rational of these three? As I said before, it's what makes the show so good, but man, this is bad. Good on Sombaru though to get all tied up again. Back at camp, Ethan elects beef over Brandon. Ethan says, Brandon isn't part of our alliance. He's only loyal to you, Lex. And Lex is like, yeah, so I don't see the issue. Everyone then decides to go to the watering hole and all of the men are ready to go, but the women are lagging behind getting ready. Tom and Frank say, whether we're in America or out here in the 
wilderness, the men are always waiting for the women to get out the door. But in nastier news, Tom has a boil. I have seen all these animals out here in Africa, and most of the animals that are fit and strong usually has a horn. So I'm growing a horn to fight off the beast that comes, and mainly it's coming from inside the camp. Oh, Lord, big Tom. Tom's boil is making him crazy. The women like to, to squeeze and cause pain to men, and that's one way they can get back at you. Some things you want them to touch, they won't. Some things you don't want them to touch, they will. It's a typical beast. How do I say this eloquently? Gross. We then see Frank say he likes Tom. They both have a strong work ethic. And while Frank is quiet, Tom is the fun one. But I think they agree on a lot of things. Tom then attempts to swing Frank to vote out Brandon next, which Frank is all ears about. And Lex, the man who just voted out Kelly, based solely on emotions, led the charge on Clarence's removal as a revenge move from a long past event, says Tom. We shouldn't vote out Brandon based on personal feelings. Bro. Bro, are you for real right now? If I was Tom, that is exactly what I would have said. But Tom is a smarter man than me, apparently, because he doesn't say anything of the sort. Don't want to annoy Lex after all. And Ethan and Tom then talk and say, Lex or no Lex, we need Brandon gone. Ethan then says, I think we can get Frank to turn on Brandon to get further in this game. And Tom says, hey, that's the American way. At Tribal Council, Jeff does his usual poking and prodding to, you know, see how people feel about each other, what are they doing in this game, that kind of stuff. And Tom completely deflects, which he does a lot, by the way, with his humor by saying, I don't have time to think about strategy. I got so much work to do around here. Out here, there's other things to do. And what is there to do out here other than think about the game? <laughs> well, Lord have mercy. I've had to wash these women. I've, had, I've got responsibility. I've got to dance, I've got to sing. Well, it's a pretty lively bunch. The ninth person voted out the second member of our jury, Brandon. Brandon, the tribe has spoken. Tom's ability to deflect with humor is legendary, but in bigger news, that was an eight to two vote to get rid of Brandon, which means all of the old Sombrew turned on him because Lex didn't. Amazing work by everyone else to have Brandon and Lex ostracized, but Ethan is baffled and wonders why Lex still voted with Brandon over him and Tom. Was Lex actually more loyal to him all along? Uh, I think the answer's simple, Lex is pandering to the jury. We then see Tom say he doesn't like Lex jeopardizing this good thing they have by siding with Brandon. I mean, Baron is so lucky Sombrew didn't band together and cause another tie there. We then see how Tom has lost about 40 pounds so far based on what everyone can guess on the show, but what makes this sweeter is the timing of the survivor auction as Tom wins himself a beer, which he dances over. And for the final item of the auction, he did me wrong. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you after I kiss you. He's a Jew and he won't eat the ham. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. The auction is closed. Hope you had fun. I do. I, do. I mean, at this point, I don't really take offense. I know he's joking. You know, he doesn't really mean it. Episode one, Ethan might have been offended, but by now everyone knows Tom is just a goofball and his humor is all in good fun. Lex says Tom killed to death at the auction and that combined with him dominating people in checkers has him realizing Tom's brilliances and how he hides his intelligence behind his silliness. Me and Tommy have kind of like a, almost like a brotherly relationship right now. He makes fun of me because I'm Jewish and I make fun of him because he's fat and he's got a boil on his neck. And there's this like competition, you know, he's gonna beat me at checkers. I I go back and forth on whether or not I think Tom is for real or some of it's put on because I think he's smarter than he lets on. What do you two think you're doing? You're both going yeah, back to back. Well, the door is this way. Tommy, he plays a good old boy, but I don't think he's as backwoods-ish as he would like to make you think. You know, his whole, you know, I'm a hayseed from Virginia, I'm not that smart. I knew quickly that he was a lot brighter than he let on. And actually, I mean, that endeared me to him and intrigued me all the more. Frankly, this is not a strategy we saw the first two seasons, so Tom is breaking new ground here. But then everyone goes to the watering hole and everyone needs to wash off, you know, men and women. And while sure, Tom does help the men bathe, he enjoys much more helping the women get clean while uh, sneaking a peek. And we are told via Kim Johnson that Tom is harmless and no one cares. No one cares. Oh yeah, I forgot for a second we're even playing Survivor because at Tribal Council, Frank is voted off six to one. Frank, Travis spoke. Episode 12 brings with it videos from home and Tom's wife says since he has been gone, she has had to ride this big horse stud instead. 
Hello, Lex wins reward, and by the way, he has now won three individual challenges, but he takes Tom with him, and I must say, as you watch this, notice how much stuff they get to do on one reward. <laughs> Just a matter of hours. Everything changed. That's great. There it is. Uh, be sure to get your tip out of it. Uh -huh. Sky's the limit. They're crazy in hell. They're ugly. They're ugly as a girl I used to date back home. They sound like me on a good Saturday night when I get home. I've never drank beer with a mustache before. Yeah. I've never drunk beer with a hippo before. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, Thunder. It's raining all right. There's not been a drop of rain hit my ass in 40 days and 40 nights. I want to get out there and put my ass out in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost as high last night. <laughs> yeah, I think you were higher. <laughs> In 30 years, you ever had the crash? The balloons are wonderfully safe. The most dangerous thing about ballooning is actually spilling the champagne when you land. I see two wildebeest just bonging along. I said, Lex, ain't that funny? I said, uh, all them wildebeest, we've seen these two are down here next to the river by themselves. I said, if I was a lion, I said, I'd pick that little one out. It'd be a good meal. I had no longer said that, then all of a sudden, a lion popped up. She's holding his mouth right on top of that wildebeest there. Where there were two wildebeest, there's now one. That yes. is rad. That is rad. That was cool. Could you imagine if the show had this big of a budget today? My word. After that long, multifaceted, epic reward, we go to the immunity challenge where... Go! First blood. Tom with another bust. You hit me, Tom. Tom took out Teresa. Tom, you're, you're going down. Watch how you talk. Ethan takes another hit from Big Tom. Oh, you... <laughs> Boom! Remember that one we had you today, you know? Here we go. Congratulations. Good. Nice work. Last vote. Kim Powers. You need to bring me a torch, Kim. The tribe has spoken. That last episode has to be the high point of Tom's story, unless he wins, of course. His wife is hilarious, he gets an epic reward, he wins immunity, and knocks off yet another Sombrero member. The only one that's left is the one that he called hot earlier. What could go wrong? He goes to the watering hole, and as it turns out, the elephants have laid a fat turd in it. Well, I spoke too soon. But besides that, they already know they're voting T-Bird off next, and Lex says, we are so bored. We've heard everyone's stories, we've spent all this time together, we just need something to do and that's when a chicken escapes they catch it don't get me wrong uh, but they say we should probably let it loose again at least that would cause some fun for us some entertainment value but what I am more impressed by is that while everyone is running around chasing this chicken Tom's like half asleep laying on the ground and he's the one that catches it he does work on a farm after all they then get letters from home which feels anticlimactic after already having seen their videos in the prior episode but it's still a touching moment for everyone except Tom, whose son sends him a funny letter. But then Lex wins reward, which comes with a nice truck, and jealousy ensues. Tom is over Lex winning everything, and Ethan says Lex is driving him up a wall. Pun intended. Kim then talks to Tom to flip on Lex with her and T-Bird, and this offer holds value. He would easily beat Kim in a final two. And are these two ladies challenge beasts? Nah, I don't think so. I think he could beat them both. However, it seems like Tom only likes to make deals when the cameras are not around. Tommy, on several occasions, has tried to get Lex voted off. He actually told Teresa that Lex should be the next one to go, unbeknownst to Lex or Ethan. And he came to me and said that uh, if I have an opportunity, it would be a good thing to vote off Lex, but he didn't want to know anything about it. Did Tom tell you not to trust me? And she just looked at me and... You know what, like this? Why? It's just so I don't understand. In telling her that, Tom is basically giving her a green light that I was the right person to vote for. And if I think that Tom, if I think that he's in a situation where he's about to screw me over and stab me in the back, I'll cut his throat. Not to spoil too much, as uh, you may be wondering, is the show just intentionally leaving out footage, 
Or is Tom only doing this when the cameras are not around to watch him? Well, here's my theory. I think his talk with Lex earlier this season when they made the alliance may not have been on camera. And this seems confirmed when we see Tom play again in the future and he makes villainous deals when no one is around. That is a rare time I'll bring up the future season. I won't do it again in this video, but it is so important in revealing Tom's character in this game. Lex then wins his third immunity challenge and T-Bird throws a Hail Mary pass by confessing to Lex that she voted for him. And uh, yeah, this doesn't really change anything as she is voted off four to one. Teresa, tribe has spoken. Finale time. It is Tom versus Ethan versus Lex versus Kim Johnson. Who will get to the final two and convince the jury to vote for them? I think Tom has a great chance with his charisma. He just has to get there. The question is, who wants to sit next to him, if anyone? Well, Lex talks to Tom and... Did you tell T-Bird that she couldn't trust me? That I was not to be trusted? Absolutely not. No question. No if, no ands, no ands about it. As far as I know, I'm... I don't think I did, but if I did, Lex has, has been the man to watch. You're going to run in the front of the pack with White Horse. You're going to be shot at. Also, did you ever tell Kim that she should vote for me? That you would never vote for me because we made a pact, but right. that she should vote for me? I told her, yeah, yeah. Why dig up bones? Not digging up bones. This is this is these are current events. I, that's kind of like over at Sam Bruro. You was the first one to say, "Well, don't vote for me." No, I didn't say that, Tom, at all. Let's let's. I, I, I don't have to. You're not, you're not going to shake on the fact that you... I don't have to make another alliance. Today is the day we're going to go vote, and I don't want you to feel like that you're obligated to me. You know, the handshake's a big deal to him. He's all, I already shook your hand once. I don't need to shake it again. I said, all right. We're taking a gamble bringing Tom in. Yes, we are. Tom does all of his sneaky sneaky when the cameras aren't around. If only he embraced that secretly smart side that people know he has. But with so much downtime, they're like, hey, let's go stand on top of these rocks. Looking epic is all out. And Tom says, I feel lucky to have made it this far in the game. But then Tom loses immunity. Barely. And now it is time to vote. First vote. Tom. Lex. It's two votes, Tom. Big Tom. Big Tom. Good bad you. Thank you. Time spoken. How could a Big Tom reach the final two? Well, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, he could have won immunity. Don't get me wrong. That's always an answer. But I'm not sure him flipping to Kim and T-Bird was the answer. And the show screwed up on an answer to a question in that last immunity challenge that caused Lex to lose to Kim. Had Lex won, he likely votes off Kim and Tom's in the final three. Lex and Tom were both given $100,000 to make up for this mistake though. And they were invited back for season eight Survivor All-Stars. 39 days, 18 All-Stars, one Survivor. What is important to know about Survivor All-Stars is how the tribes are separated. For the first time ever, there are three tribes of six. The Mogo Mogo and Saboga tribe each have two former winners, and the Shapara tribe has none. The Shapara tribe consists of Rob Sesternino, Sue Hawk, Boston Rob, Amber Burkich, Alicia Calloway, and Big Tom, which is the only tribe that contains no past winners and is definitely the outlier on the season. Now, unlike in past seasons, there is no marooning by Jeff. The players get dropped off at their beach with a machete and a map to the water well, and that's it meager supplies at best. Upon arriving at that Shapara beach, Big Tom lays out exactly what he thinks Survivor All-Stars is all about. But I'm here for the duration. This ain't a little boy's game, it's for the big boy. Later on, Boston Rob and Alicia are bickering and fighting over whether they should work on the shelter or work on getting a fire going. Rob says shelter is way more important. How he sleeps is just going to affect him. And Alicia is arguing that fire is everything. Fire is life. Big Tom just sits back and lets it play out and tells us that everyone is whining like a bunch of little children. I never heard so much cry baby titty sucking all my life. We've bitched about the clothes. We've bitched about the weather. And we bitched that God ain't give us no water. 
We're gonna have to uh, toughen up a little bit. Shapiro wins immunity, and that is it for the premiere episode, which features a very small amount of Big Tom. Is he not integral to the overall story, or is he simply hanging back for now? while letting these explosive personalities duke it out. Either way, he does seem to be the same Big Tom we know and love from Africa, but he hasn't got the screen time so far that a lot of the larger characters are getting. So it's a little concerning, but we'll see what happens. It is now episode two and neither tribe has any fire, not even Saboga, who went to tribal council, which means that they can't boil the parasite filled water from their well and therefore everyone's dehydrated. However, it is now raining in Panama and that will be happening a lot this season. And this causes a celebration by Shapera as they sing their own rendition of Nobody knows the word, but it's all good today. <laughs> After a war challenge, Saboga wins, but they only win some lousy blankets, and it's pretty pointless as Jeff says, if you don't want those blankets here, every tribe can get a pot and flint instead, so that you can all make fire, and of course, Saboga picks that. But just like in the last episode back at camp, Alicia and Boston Rob are fighting again, this time about how to make the fire, and uh, you know, how should they do it, and why they should do it their way, and blah 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 blah. Big Tom is not amused, and he tells us his strategy with dealing with these people wanting to take charge of everything. Right now, <laughs> old farm boys just gotta keep his mouth shut. It's too early in the game to be bossy. And I think we got four or five bosses, maybe one in you. Shapiro wins immunity again. So we move on to episode three where tree mail arrives and it looks like each tribe will have to build a new shelter in a 24 hour period using supplies given to them by the Home Depot. Immediately, Sue Hawk says exactly what she thinks they should do. She says it with authority and abrasiveness and fights with Big Tom when he doesn't agree with her over something seemingly stupid. Big Tom then tells us exactly what he thinks of her. Ours is gonna be a disaster, I can tell you that right now. Uh, now see, there we go. We've got a good rip. The we floor need, is You know what up. we need? Take that tree out in the middle. Uh, no, the tree comes out in the middle. Why? Why? I'm taking it out. After we fight, you will. Sue, she's a hag from hell. Where do I have a beam in the middle of my house? Uh, you just got it. You got there. it in every corner. Yeah, on the connected bottom. to a wall. How I made the 48 without Sue Hawk leading me by the hand is a mystery. With Boston Rob leading and Big Tom as his number two, they build the best shelter by far and win reward, which of course brings us a celebratory dance by Big Tom. <laughs> the immunity challenge, the Shapara and Saboga tribes are surprised when Jenna Maraska quits due to her mom getting worse and worse at home. Due to someone who's very ill at home right now, that's getting worse. I need to pull myself out of the game. A few people then express their opinions on quitting, and Big Tom says that his entire family could die. But don't let him know until the game's over, he'll deal with it then. It feels a lot like he is undercutting Jenna's decision to leave the game here. Before I left, I told my family, I made a commitment. I was coming here, not staying home. If they all got killed in a car wreck, don't call me. I'll be there after it's over. But now I made that decision for Big Tom and a lot of people are different than Big Tom. As it turns out, her mother does pass away soon after she arrives home while people are playing the game, so she definitely made the right decision. There is no immunity challenge since she quit, so we scurry on to episode four, where Shapara wins reward, which included some toiletry items, one of them being a portable toilet, which Big Tom naturally wears around his noggin. We had to carry everything that we won back to our camp, and uh, Big Tom put the toilet over his head I'm willing to bet it's not the first time Big Tom's had his head in the toilet. At the immunity challenge, players are blindfolded with a caller telling them where to go. Well, Alicia doesn't do a great job as the caller for Shapara since uh, Tom gets whacked over and over again to the point where it seems like he could have gotten a concussion. Oh, 
hammered by Colby. Big Tom may be hurt. And even worse, Shapiro loses immunity on the puzzle part of this challenge, despite being the first tribe to get to work on it. Mogo Mogo wins immunity! Yeah, man. Yeah. Back at camp, Amber has decided that Rob Sesternino is next to go and loops Big Tom into the plan to vote him out, which is great for Tom. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks him, hey, all those hits to the immunity challenge, uh, what do you think about it? And Tom says, I didn't see it coming. And uh, the only thing I asked him was, I wanted to get the tag number off that truck, it hit me. Jeff then inquires about any relationships developed so far in the game, and he finds out all about uh, Rob and Amber because, as you see, they've been all over each other since day one. Rob Sesternino even says, You're so warm. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. I don't know when, but they're gonna do it. So at Tribal and Tom tells Jeff exactly what he has been seeing back at camp, it's uh, it's pretty accurate. There's a little bit of, I've been known cuddling and oh, it might be a little grind in there late one night. I'm 25 and young, having fun. I'm 48 and old and watching, having fun. <laughs> Shapiro goes to vote and Rob Sesternino goes home unanimously. Rob, the trap is broken. So previously, Shapiro won enough challenges that they got enough keys to open their box that contained rice and whiskey that every tribe has, but Shapiro got theirs open first. Well, Big Tom loves him some whiskey, and that's important to know. And while drinking it on the beach, he jokingly flirts with Alicia, and uh, take that as you will. That one's gonna win us this challenge. I say nice track. Oh, crap. That's the best built thing since Alicia. Sue then tells us that she doesn't like Tom at all. In fact, she thinks he is a stupid drunk. The feeling is mutual though, as Shapiro goes to christen their new vessel they built for the upcoming challenge. And before Tom can get there with his whiskey, Sue pees on it instead. He says uh, she's a hag and her pee will probably put a hole through the raft. Tom came down with the whiskey to christen the vessel. I christened oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, you guys don't move. I got pee. So I peed right on the raft. You pissed on it. It's supposed to be pure grain liquor. Kiss my ass, what a hag. That's gonna make a hole in the driftwood. that will rot any wood I know. I'm afraid the ship's gonna sink now. After a war challenge, it turns out that whichever tribe loses will be dissolved and drafted by the two remaining tribes, Mogo Mogo and Shapiro win. So, Saboga is dismantled. Ethan and Jerry go to Mogo Mogo and Shapiro gets Rupert and Jenna Lewis. Rupert. Rupert, no longer a member of Saboga, you are now a member of Shapiro. At the immunity challenge, each tribe has their members going down a bunch of balance beams to retrieve flags and bring them back to their starting point. While Tom does this, he actually falls at one point, but then has an epic recovery for a man of his stature. Big Tom! He then battles Ethan Zahn, his old alliance member from Africa, on the battle bridge and... Big Tom and Ethan, two, one, go! Ethan first in the water. Shapiro does ultimately win immunity, so we move on to episode six where Big Tom says he likes Rupert, he really gets along with him, and he thinks they're quite similar. However, he is worried that since Rupert is so similar, he could take Tom's place on the tribe and in the alliance, making Tom expendable. I really like old Rupert. He's kind of like me. He's easy going, nothing don't bother him. I know it may cost me down the road because he could easily take my place. All day at camp, Sue is moping around and as it turns out, at the previous reward challenge, Richard got naked as usual and ran into Sue on purpose while naked, which is not usual. At first, she didn't think much of it, but overnight she mentally collapses and feels violated by Hatch. Everyone has their own thoughts as to why Sue is acting in this way on her tribe. Tom says he isn't her, so he can't say for sure what she's thinking, but either way, he is okay with her leaving the game. I know she's on our team. You can say it's our battle. I mean, it's gonna hurt us all. Yeah, 
and I hope she works it out. At the reward challenge, Sue Hawk quits in a dramatic fashion. For all the details of this entire scenario, watch the story of Richard Hatch. But all we need to know is that she feels violated by Hatch and feels like she cannot mentally play any longer. Shapara, to no fault of Big Tom, loses reward. And back at camp, the remaining Shapara members make a pact to be the final six. With six strong, they're six strong. Yep. And then we can just roll one right after another and after we another. we stay strong together. Then it comes and down to us six, mm -hmm. then whatever. I agree wholehearted. I agree. Let's all make a pact to stick yes. together. Yes. You wanna well, do what? that? Yeah, yeah. Do it right now. The next day they get tree mail which informs them that there will be no immunity challenge since Sue quit which causes Shapira to have a not so serious moment of silence. Big Tom then celebrates and dances now that Sue is gone and while it seems like it isn't good fun, Alicia doesn't like him doing it and thinks it is disrespectful and in poor taste. Moving on to episode 7 has Shapira once again winning the combined reward and immunity challenge where they will get to spend an entire day on an expensive yacht and at a waterfall. They also get to temporarily kidnap one player from Mogamogo to join them. They pick Kathy Vavrick O'Brien who immediately feels welcomed and recognizes that unlike Mogamogo, Shapara is actually having a good time together and enjoying the time they have in this game, which she loves. Big Tom even leads Shapara in a song to welcome her. We got a new girl, her name is Cat. We got a new girl, her name is Cat. She fits in just like that. She fits in. We slide along to episode 8 where each tribe is tasked with sending one player to the other tribe to pick three items they want to steal as part of the reward challenge. Before Jenna Lewis leaves, Big Tom jokes and asks her if she can check with Lex and Ethan to see if their alliance is still good to go. While it is a joke, all jokes have a hint of truth to them. Yes, have a good don't time, worry. Jenna. Let's see if Ethan and my alliance are still tight. <laughs> <laughs> Life is really good on Shapara as they win reward and then win immunity again. Episode 9 is a recap episode and not really part of the overarching story. So we carry on to episode 10 where we find out that every single morning, Big Tom and Rupert are up early working. While Rupert does most of the fishing, Rupert does say that Tom is the hardest worker on the Shapara tribe. Me and Rupert, we get up early and the rest of them lays in and we go fishing about every morning. I'm gonna catch one fish. You gonna get in the water? Yeah. I'll see you when I catch one. You can't get it. Right, might be dark. That's okay. I'll sit here all day. All right. Bring that whale on in! Big Tom did get him a little fish. Not a bad fish for his first fish ever on the spear. Both tribes then gather on a beach where they meet with Jeff Probst and he tells them to pair up and have a picnic lunch together. Everyone suspects this is merge. Big Tom hangs out with Jerry who has been feeling down so he gives her a pep talk. They all then finish up their picnic lunch and go back to Jeff who tells them. Drop your buffs. There we go. Is it time for the merge? Why not? We are pretty deep into the game after all. And as it turns out, uh, no merge. Instead, we are doing our first tribe swap at a time when the merge should be taking place. What is strange about the swap though is that despite everyone blindly pulling buffs from an urn, the tribes basically just swap colors. And the only person to actually change who they are living with is Amber, which makes Boston Rob very, very sad. At the immunity challenge, they are being quizzed on their knowledge of the first seven seasons and while almost none of the questions are really that tough tom's tribe does miss one question and what is that question in what country did survivor africa take place shapira says kenya that's right moga moga says nairobi that's wrong Shapira scores. Despite that seemingly easy missed question, they win immunity, and as they leave the challenge, Boston Rob quickly makes a deal with Lex to save Amber if he can. If he can, if he can. We move to episode 11, and let's pause and recognize that Shapira has been to one tribal council all game, one time in nine episodes. That is insane, and it makes the game a whole lot easier when your head is never available to be chopped. Anyways, Boston Rob is moping around because he misses his girl Amber, and Big Tom compares him to a calf being weaned from his mother. I've never seen Rob all screwed up like this, but it's like when a calf is sucking its mommy's titty, 
And when you wean that calf, it, it balls and it'll go crazy. It tries to go through fences and bushes and stuff. Rob, same way, and it'll take about three days to get a calf weaned from its mother. A human's about to say. However, Rob's weaning is cut short as they see who got voted off from the new Shapara, and it was Jerry. Amber was actually saved, which makes Rob very happy and is a crucial turning point for Tom's game, as we will discuss later. For now, Jeff says, Drop your buffs. Here we go. This time the buffs. Yeah! That's right, on day 26, they are finally merging. Boston Rob wins immunity and decides, eh, I can cut Lex despite him saving Amber. Whatever is best for Boston Rob's longevity is exactly what he will do. Uh, friendships be darned. So he tells Lex that, hey, sorry about this, but we are voting you out next. Lex gets understandably upset and reveals that if he had voted out Amber and saved Jerry, then he would have come into this merge with the numbers instead of Rob. Now, how would that work? Well, let's assume that Amber was voted out and Jerry stayed. He would have had Jerry, Kathy, Sheehan, himself, of course, and Big Tom, who he would have flipped over to him, AKA that alliance that Tom joked about a few episodes ago is real. Boston Rob would have had Alicia, Rupert, and Jenna. However, since Jerry went home and Amber was saved, Boston Rob has the six to three advantage instead of a five to four disadvantage since Tom isn't going to flip over to the minority to just simply be part of the minority. Boston Rob didn't have any concrete info on Big Tom possibly flipping to Lex until now. Right. I had my game all worked out and if, and if I had gotten rid of Amber, do you know what I would have come in here with? I would have come in here with my numbers advantage and I did that just because you're my friend. It had, you would have fact, four and I, you would have tried I, to base I completely, swing. my no. own game, I screwed my own game up. I'm sorry, buddy. You got more allegiance to them than you got to me. I mean, After I asking made, me for a special friend agreement. Favor. This is obviously terrible for Tom's game, and now pay attention as for the rest of the season, Boston Rob will dump on Tom whenever possible. Lex is then voted out at Tribal Council 7 to 2. Lex, Tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Episode 12 begins, and just in case Boston Rob had any doubts about what Lex said being true, Kathy then uh, seals the deal and sells out their secret alliance to him as well. And this makes Boston Rob mad. Really mad. Because he had some, you know, he had an arrangement with Tom, and he felt that for some reason you guys had it just by kind of osmosis. A very important thing did happen today, though. Lex slipped up in his conversation when he was mad, yelling and screaming and basically exposed Big Tom, meaning that Big Tom would have switched sides. Big Tom, you got caught, and your best buddy sold you out, and he didn't even know he did it. We continue on to the reward challenge where everyone gets a sneak peek at the tapes their loved ones made for them. Big Tom tries to contain his emotions, but he really does love his son and wife. Boston Rob wins the challenge and trades his tape from home to give everyone else their letters from home instead. Kathy then gets to work on convincing people that they need to consider flipping, and the best time to do that is either at final seven or final five. Right now we are at final eight, so it's not completely clear what her game plan is, but this story isn't about her. Sheehan also talks to Tom about possibly moving away from the larger alliance to make a move while he entertains both conversations. Him being seen talking to both of these women for quite an extended period of time looks suspicious to Boston Rob and to Jenna Lewis. There might be something that could be done. Right. It would make sense. I had a alliance with Rob and Amber the whole time. Yeah, but you think they're gonna take you to the final three? Well, that's why I know. You'd be a fool to sit here and, and, not, Wait. and not do nothing. Yeah. I've been sticking with my original deal, but when everything's going too good, you better be looking out. It flies apart. And see, so Shane gives me another option. I will be weighing my options all the way out. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks if Big Tom has made some friends that makes it tougher to vote them out, and he replies by saying, Either put their names down to see mine come up. I come to win, and I want to win, but. Uh, I want to win with class too. While this does look good and sound good, it is also very telling of Big Tom's mindset and the game he is playing here and why he is playing the way he is. He always wants to be perceived as that fun country boy and not as someone devious or as someone who backstabs to make it further in the game. The pagonging of the old Mogo Mogo continues as Kathy is voted out next. Kathy, the tribe has spoken. Something to go. 
Episode 13 begins with a large clue as to what the reward challenge will be about. And Tom uses that large clue, which is a mask, to try and make a joke to lighten the mood around camp since it has been endlessly raining. Rob is not amused. At the reward challenge, castaways have to answer questions, and for every question they get right, they get to chop at someone's mask. Three chops, and uh, your mask is destroyed. It is very similar to the coconut chopping challenge in Marquesas. However, Big Tom is the first one chopped out of this challenge, and who is it that finishes him off? <laughs> Tom is our first casualty. This should be a huge red flag as Sheehan is everyone's next target and no one really likes her. So for Tom to go out before her uh, should be sending a signal to him. Anyways, Rupert wins the challenge and as part of the reward, he has seven different plates of food to distribute, ranging from a nice steak dinner with an open bar, all the way down to a bowl of rice and camp water. Rupert gives himself the best meal, but then he goes in this order of best to worst food. Boston Rob, Jenna Lewis, Amber Burkich, Alicia Calloway, Big Tom, and then Sheehan. Essentially revealing the pecking order in his mind, Big Tom is upset about the food he gets, but once again, doesn't seem to notice the red flag, which is what he should actually be upset about. We went to one of the fanciest restaurants. They said it was five star. <laughs> Don't, please don't stab me. <laughs> but I wouldn't hit a dog in the hind end with it cause I got a tater and it was cold. However, she and wins immunity and Alicia is voted out next, which is no good for Tom. Good that he survived, but he is now losing numbers at a time when he should be looking to flip. Alicia, the tribe has spoken. Episode 14 begins with a reward challenge that he and his son win. They then do a dance to celebrate. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Big Tom, choose one survivor. We'll bring their loved one back. I'm gonna pick aggravation right there. Boston Rob. It was good drink of beer with my old boy. I wish it had been his mother or my neighbor's uh, sister. <laughs> Bo's a bigger dumbass than his dad. I mean, Big Tom's pretty dumb, but Bo is just, he's out there too. The key to this thing is Rob keeping his alive. Man. Big Tom, bro. You gotta do what you gotta I'll do. trust him as far as I can pull. I gotta get Rob and him to keep me with him. Thankfully for Tom's game, he wins immunity and saves his hide. He celebrates this as you might expect him to back at camp. Come big Tom in, here it comes. I'm worried myself to death. I can't save everybody. I'm worried myself to death. She and then talks to Tom about flipping, but he just gives her attitude and asks, how would they do that when they only have two votes? While he has a point, he does absolutely nothing to help her make a flip happen, and he even gets mad at her. At Tribal Council, She and is voted it out and the uh, pagonging of Mogo Mogo is complete. Chan, the tribe spoken. Good luck, everyone. Tom just keeps losing numbers to make anything happen in his favor, but now we are down to the final five. So maybe, just maybe, he can get Rupert and Jenna together to knock out either Rob or Amber because clearly they are inseparable. <laughs> It is now episode 15 and we see Tom rambling on saying a bunch of unintelligible things. Boston Rob then exaggerates and says how he has barely understood Tom all game and continually paints him to be super dumb. Boston Rob then wins the car reward challenge and he brings Amber with him. And uh, since whoever he picked to go with him gets a car as well, Amber gets that car, and Rupert gets extremely jealous and hopes the car curse bites them both in the butt. He tries talking to Tom about now, since we're at final five, making a flip on Rob and Amber and getting one of them out. Now, this is really motivated by Rupert being jealous, but, but who cares? For Tom, this should be an open door to make a move. Tom entertains this, but basically is not on board. If I get Tom in with Jenna and I, we three would be the power in this five and put Rob and Amber out of this game. You know, everybody on the tribe's tried to change my life for the last two or three weeks. I've entertained the thought, you know, that I also am playing the game. You know, I want to win too. I mean, I'm not going to lay dead and 
let everybody just run over me, which I have been most of the game. This is extremely dumb. It is so obvious to anyone paying attention, especially to Big Tom, who's been on the tribe with them the entire game, that they're going to the final two together. And Rupert wanting to flip means he can bring his ally, Jenna Lewis, with him. Since Boston Rob has won so many challenges, it seems even more obvious that Tom would be better off against Rupert and Jenna, but he still thinks he is good with Rob and has completely clouded his judgment. Plus, he wants to win with class, and helping Rupert and Jenna would be, uh, I don't know, I guess backstabbing Rob and Amber. Boston Rob then instigates a fight between Rupert and Tom that has them both revealing secrets that Rob really shouldn't know about right in front of him. So you tell me you want me to vote Rob off. I mean, that's what we're saying. That's, that was my game plan. You didn't tell me that we needed to get Rob off. Rob, did you or did you not tell me we needed to get Rob off? You were tired of watching him sit around and you needed to get Rob off and you were sorry you made an alliance with him. Did you not tell me that? Why would I want to get Rob off and I've had alliance with him the whole time? You didn't even know you I had told me. Of him. course I knew you had an alliance with him. You told me you had an alliance with him. I think then you shouldn't sit back there and be talking bad about it. At this point, Tom's game is pretty much over unless he wins immunity and uh, he doesn't do that. And Boston Rob seems up in the air on whether to vote out Tom or Rupert next. I guess that fight really shook him up. He talks to Tom and asks him point blank about whether he ever talked behind Rob's back, which Tom skirts around, denies, and then basically lies to Rob's face. He even calls himself a pawn in a swing vote, which if he wants to truly present himself as good with Rob and Amber, he would uh, never say he is the swing vote between the two couples. Have you or have you not tried to mock me to get me kicked out of this game? So Absolutely far? not. You marked yourself every time you won, and I have not. And marked you haven't you. gone to anybody and said we need to get him out. No, no, no. sir. Because I'm the pawn. I told you I'm the swing boat. No, you're if with. You, you're you, with us. There is no swing. We're a group. There's no swing. At tribal, when Rob votes for Tom, he says he carried him here, and now the ride is over. Pony ride's over. You're welcome for carrying you this far. Big Tom is then voted out unanimously. Big Tom, the tribe has spoken. I heard it. Is it just me, or did that feel like deja vu in many ways for Big Tom? I mean, it almost seems like Tom didn't learn anything in the five season gap between Africa and All-Stars, and it shows. Him, Rupert, and Jenna should have knocked off Boss Robin Amber, but uh, they chose not to. Big Tom the first time was a lot of fun. Big Tom this time was a lesson in frustration. Boston Rob only wanted people at the end who would bend to his will, and hey, he succeeded in doing so. But he burnt a lot of bridges along the way, including this one with Big Tom. So what do you think about Big Tom? Should he get a third shot to play the game? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.